guys, I want to welcome you back. I'm Dave from MyGunValues.com and we're going to continue our uh, discussion here on the 375 h and H or Holland & Holland Magnum. The I want to apologize, we had shot this video once before and the audio got screwed up and our wireless microphone seems to have conked out and I've got another one ordered but we're going to have to make do with the camera audio on this one, so I, I do apologize. But so we're going to we're going to discuss the uh, Ruger number one, which is the rifle we're going to be using to to shoot this cartridge. The Ruger number one was one of the many uh, inventions by Bill Ruger came out in 1967 and everybody pretty much said the day of the single shot rifle was over, nobody wanted them, and Bill Ruger set out, as he often did, about proving them wrong, like he did with the Black Hawk and the, uh, the original Mark I and the Model 77 and several of his other designs that have gone on to become really classics. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, the Ruger number one is a falling block design, similar to the old Farquharson from the uh, 1800s. There's a finger lever down here. You push and you drop that down and the, there's a falling block here and that's why it's a falling block action. And you have your, uh, you would load your cartridges singly and then you close it and then the firing pins contained in the breech block and you would pull the trigger you know once you aimed and shot. You got a tang safety here. Now one thing about these tang safeties that I've noticed this Ruger was a mechanical genius and he came up with a way to not only give this rifle an extractor he actually gave it an ejector which was the first and to my knowledge the only falling block to ever have an ejector. If there are some out there, I'm unfamiliar with them, but you drop that out, instead of it just pulling the cartridge back a little bit, it ejects it, and I will grab an empty here out of the box. You can see we've got some loaded up in the box there behind me, and we'll be doing some shooting with those. Um, anyway, you push your cartridge in, bring it up, it's ready to shoot, then when, you, when you're done you eject it and it kicks the cartridge case as you can see rather forcefully out of the chamber. One of the issues with this is, this is the tang safety. This little is almost a little too long and it stops the cartridges. It hits them and kind of hangs them up here. Now that's a good and bad thing. It can stop it from coming back and hitting you in the eye but it, they won't clear the action if you're trying to do a quick reload. I'm aware of several guys who've shortened this tang button just a little bit so that the cartridges don't hang up on that. It is full. That's fire. That's safe. Um, you'll see listed on our website, you'll see some of them are listed with an Alexander Henry forend. That's what that is. Just That's the design of it. You see it comes with open sights, uh, bead, front sight here. One thing about all the Ruger number ones chambered in 375 I've ever come across is they all tend to be in really, really, really good condition. Um, some of that's in a tribute to Ruger and the way they do things and finish their guns, but a lot of it has to do with the fact I don't think a lot of guys shoot these very heavy. Because 375 H&H is a powerful, large gun, does have some recoil. So, if you run across one where somebody's trying to get seven or eight hundred dollars, but it's got some fair barrel wear, or it's got some rust, uh, pass. Wait for the next one, because generally speaking, when you see these, they're almost always in very, very good shape, at least in the United States. If you were to see them in Africa, uh, I'm sure the professional hunters over there use them quite heavily, but here... They're usually in really good condition. Um, this one's called the uh, number one tropical. Uh, some of it's it's got a really really heavy barrel, uh, which helps tame the recoil to some degree. 
um, because you don't have a bolt or a lever or a slide action here chambering cartridges from a magazine, the overall length of the gun can be shorter, but you can still have a 24 inch barrel. So what we're going to do with this is we've, and I've, I've done some loading and we've already done that video, um, where we're going to sight this in and we're not only are we going to sight it in using full power loads, but we're going to sight it in using reduced power loads and we're trying to try to get some reduced loads that shoot to the same point of aim as the full power loads for practice because there's no sense beating your brains out with full power loads on this cartridge if you can get a reduced power load that shoots to the same point of aim and that's one of the things that the 375 H&H is known for is to have reduced it's fairly easy to get a reduced load that shoots to a similar point of aim as a full power load at least within sane ranges, which is generally considered 100 yards. Um, with that, I want to thank you for watching. Oh, I, you know what? I do want to back that up a minute. Stop. I wanted to pull... One of the things Ruger did... I forgot all about this. One of the things Ruger did is he used this angled forehand screw to kind of pull... kind of pulls the gun down into the stock a little bit better. He does this with his bolt actions, too. You remove it, you can see all your all your works underneath it here. This this pin right here rotates and that's what the screw goes into. And I'm not and you don't ever want to work the action with that screw out because that pin will fall out on you. Okay. Uh, swivel studs, one on the barrel, one screwed into the stock, uh, pistol grip cap red rubber recoil pad. I would liken the recoil of this gun, at least standing and shooting it with full power loads, to a three and a half inch 12 gauge shell. Again, when you're standing and shooting at ducks. When you sit down at the bench to sight this in, it can become, you know, after a few shots, it can become quite difficult to, uh, to hold on to it and not flinch. When I go to shoot this, I will be putting on a limb saver recoil pad just to give me a little more, it, it does two things. It gives me a little more cushion back there for my shoulder because sighting in from the bench, you're aimed right behind the rifle so the recoil tends to be more straight back at you. And um, it adds a little bit of length of pull and I'm six foot two, so I need a fairly decent length of pull so the gun fits me properly. So, but that's the Ruger number one. At least in the 375 H&H, there's many, many, many different models and chamberings out there of the number one. But for now, I do want to thank you for watching. I hope you've learned something. We're going to get some shooting done on this, hopefully tomorrow. Um, we, it is the end of February of 2017, and we're actually getting some snow outside today. The weather weatherman told us we were going to have good weather, so I was looking forward to shooting, and not going to happen. So... If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to post them here at YouTube, or you can reach us at the uh, Contact Us page at MyGunValues.com. Thank you for watching.